Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, what we're going to be doing is a bit of a group share and intuitive message and group healing session. Now, if you're part of the Bahati Vibe tribe, then you have probably seen this or we did this before earlier on in the week. We did it on our Astro Live chat, which we do every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Instagram. But I tried to save that video and for whatever reason, probably Mercury Retrograde, it didn't save to my phone, although it said that it did. It just seemed really powerful. It seemed that a lot of people were touched by it and impacted by it in a positive way that I felt kind of called to come on here and share the message again with those of you guys that didn't get a chance to see it for whatever reason and to give you a chance to benefit from it. The first thing that came through for me at the start of this week was the word metamorphosis and I had to sit with that and of course the first image that I got when I thought of the word metamorphosis was butterfly. Of course, how could you not say the word metaphor, metamorphosis and not think about the image and the symbolism of the butterfly? And basically what the metamorphosis is, is this change of a circumstance, a person, a situation. And what happens is, is that there's some type of pressure that is happening, that is creating this huge transformation in your life, within you, around you, in your current circumstances. Let's go back to the symbolism of the butterfly. The butterfly goes through this incredible change and transformation, but before it was a butterfly, it was once a caterpillar. This caterpillar feels this signal within them to go into solitude or go within a sacred space in order for this change to happen around them and within them. Now, as they're in the cocoon and as they're in this sacred space, there's change that is happening because effort and pressure has been applied and is kind of exerting itself. So there's something that is happening from within that's triggered from around them, from their instincts, from the divine, in order to undertake this incredible meta metamorphosis, this incredible transformation. Now, outside of the fact that the caterpillar is in this cocoon and it's alone in a lot of ways, it's important for me to say that even if you yourself are not physically actually alone, at the end of the day, it's you within your body. It's you within this skin sack. <laughs> and there is no one inside of you. There is no one else experiencing what you're experiencing but you. So in a lot of ways, you are in this cocoon. You are in this shell of complete transformation and transition, just as if the caterpillar was sitting in the cocoon. And for others, it can be a little bit more symbolic than that. Maybe you are actually alone. Maybe you are on your own. But either way, the environment may not be the most comfortable for you. It may be totally new territory. It may be terrifying. It may not be the prettiest thing, but it's happening. And the next word that came through after metamorphosis was sacrifice. In order for something to be gained, something had to be released. Something had to be sacrificed. This could be relationships, a circumstance, a location, a situation, unhealthy habits, negative thinking, whatever it is, it has to be sacrificed. Now, as I say this, I really want you guys to, to realize that I'm not saying that this process is something that is beautiful, that it feels good, that it feels pretty. In a lot of ways, whatever it is that you are currently sacrificing is something that once made you comfortable or is something that you have become accustomed to. And to step away from that means that you are stepping into the unknown territory, which will challenge your current comfort zones, which will challenge your ability to feel comfortable. But again, that's all a part of the sacrifice. Something has to be released. Something has to be exchanged in order for you to receive. And that's what a sacrifice is. It's not something that is always e easily given. If it was, it wouldn't be a sacrifice. So this emphasizes even further to me that this metamorphosis that we're in right now or that you're in right now is not the most comfortable and it doesn't feel pretty. You know, wake up one one morning and you know the bird the, the birds are singing and the wind is blowing through your hair and the, the doors fling open and you can see the dawn of a new day. Sometimes those feelings are there. And even if there's excitement, there could also be fear because you're a complex human being and there's you can feel more than one feeling. But either way, what it is that I'm saying is that something needs to be sacrificed and something here is now ready for you to let go of it. Just like the caterpillar has found his way into that sacred space, 
he is then releasing and sacrificing his old ways. He literally is giving up his primary mode of transportation, which is just walking everywhere, just kind of slowly, just kind of inching his way around and eating. But that had to be sacrificed and this transformation, this pressure for him to transform. I can't imagine that it's pretty. I can't imagine that it's comfortable. I can't imagine that it feels good. I'm sure in a lot of ways it's very painful, but he does it because there's something within him that is triggering him, that there is more out there for him. So then he then agrees with the universe and says, okay, I will sacrifice, I will release this, I will let go of this. Now, when it comes to your life, there's something that does need to be sacrificed and released in order for metamorphosis and transformation to occur. That's always how it is with the cycles of nature. Anytime there is a death, there is always a birth. Anytime there's an ending, there's always something that begins. Now, there are three questions that stand out to me. And what I want you guys to do is to put one hand over your stomach and the next over your heart. And pretty much what this is doing is allowing you to connect with your vibe, your intuition, and your feeling, your emotions. And this is important because as I ask you these next three questions, I really want you guys to pay attention to how they make you feel and what intuitively bubbles up, what intuitively presents itself to you. What we're doing is we're moving from the subconscious to the conscious, we're becoming more aware. So the first question that I wanna ask you as you're holding your hand over your heart and over your stomach is, what is unhealthy to you right now? What is unhealthy? Now, this answer is going to be different for everyone. The entire world can tell you that it's healthy for you to eat broccoli or carrots or whatever is currently trending. But if you eat those things and they make you feel bad, then that is not the healthy option for you because you might actually have a reaction to it. So you having your hand over your stomach and over your heart is helping you to connect with the truth and the reality, which is what is healthy for you. This means that you have to stand within your own truth and ask yourself to be a leader for yourself, to be an advocate for yourself, and to stand up for yourself and say that the rest of the world can say that this logically makes sense for me or that this is where I should be or this is what it is that I'm what I should be doing. But in reality, intuitively, these things do not make me feel good. And because they don't make me feel good, they're not healthy to me. The other aspect to that is certain relationships. There are certain people who are fine the way that they are. And that's all well and good, but the way that they are may not be constructive and healthy for the way that you are. So healthy is different for everyone. And as much as you love that person, or as much as you like that person, or as much as you can see the potential in that, it's still not healthy for you to stay within that space or within an aspect of that relationship. So a part of it, a piece of it, or the whole of it needs to be sacrificed, it needs to be released, it needs to be let go of. The other thing that I want you guys to be aware of is that healthy, again, is different for everyone. And what is healthy to another person, again, could be unhealthy for the next. And the metaphor that I use with this is people who are training for marathons. One person could be have this one specific diet and this one exercise routine and these goals that work out for them and that is healthy for them and the whole world can say like yes that makes sense and look how much you've succeeded and look how much you've accomplished but you under that same diet you under that same exercise plan and you with that same goal it's not healthy nor is it realistic for you to try to match what that person is doing or for you to run alongside them so that was two t different types of healthy. There's the, their standard of healthy and there's your standard of healthy. Granted, does it work for them? Absolutely. But if you apply that same method and that same approach and that same lifestyle to yourself, it is detrimental. The other thing that I want you guys to be aware of is that as human beings, things happen to us, things impact us, things influence us. And it can, in that moment, wound you or make you suffer or make you sick or weak. So in that state, you may not be healthy, you may not be strong, and that's okay because this happens to every single one of us at some point within our lives. So for you to do what everyone else is doing, even though they are healthy beings, they're in a different state than you are. So for you to try to match them in order to push on this healthy lifestyle or this way of life or this expectation that you have for yourself is not healthy, it's detrimental. And at the end of the day, you have to put your hand over your stomach, you have to put your hand over your heart, and you have to ask yourself, what is healthy for me right now? 
Do I have to disconnect from the, from the ways of the world? Do I have to disconnect away from expectations? Do I have to disconnect away from what it is required of me? Do I have to disconnect away from what makes sense, what logically makes sense in order for me to do what is right for what feels good for me right now because that is healthy. I need to be healed. I need time for myself. I need to be a priority. These are questions that when I ask you, what is it that is healthy for you? What is that is unhealthy for you? The unhealthy things need to be released and let go of. They need to be sacrificed in order for you to get into a space where you are create, you're in a space of thriving and healing and abundance and manifestation. And that's gonna be different for everyone. And the way that you'll know what it is right for you is the way that it makes you feel. The next thing that it is that I want you guys to look at is what is draining you right now? Again, this is another thing that needs to be sacrificed and needs to be released. Even again, if logically it may make sense that it's giving to you in your life, if the reality is that it's draining you or your perception of it is draining you or your expectations of it are draining you, it has to be released. It's one of those things that gets sacrificed. Now, I wanna say that as we're going through this process, I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting emotion that's kind of triggered and that's to be expected, that's normal. But it's also important for me to say that as normal as it is, it is not comfortable. I think that for a lot of people, we have this expectation that spiritual awakening and emotional transformation and healing um, and going through this experience is something that's always gonna be positive and the wind again is gonna blow through our hair and. The, we're going to see the light at the, end of the, at the end of the tunnel and the dawning of a new day. But in a lot of, a lot of ways it is painful because what it is is it, it's an honest assessment. But at the end of the day, again, once something gets released, once something is acknowledged and then you realize that, okay, I have to exchange this in order for me to receive this, once you put yourself in a position to do that, that's when that metamorphosis happens. That's when your wings grow. That's when you move from one phase of your life into the next. And that leads me to the next question, which is what no longer serves you? Again, realistically, logically, it may make, make sense to the entire world. It may, you know, the whole, your family, your friends, your community, your tribe, even you might be saying that it makes sense for me to do this or it makes sense, you know, this is the perfect fit or whatever, but in reality, how does it make you feel intuitively what looks good on the outside the vibration may not match and intuitively you may be getting signals that this thing or this person is not right for you and you have to respect that you have to honor that these are all of the things that it is that it's time for you now to let go of and within this process within this cocoon stage it's painful again this pressure is being applied just as it would you know, how diamonds are created with a piece of coal, all that pressure and that heat keeps pushing on that, that diamond for years, years before, or that piece of coal for years before it finally turns into a diamond. And the same thing is true for you. Now, back to the metaphor of the caterpillar, when the caterpillar is in the cocoon, he's not being distracted by anything. He spent all of his life kind of gaining resources and gaining energy and eating in order to prepare himself for this moment right here. And this moment is 115% his alone. It is exclusively his. It belongs only to him. He's not coming out and peeking his head out in order to get you know, distracted by the seasons or are the flowers still blooming or what's going on with Mr. Caterpillar over there. No, he has made this time exclusively his and again, you know, he's in this sense, he probably has a sense of isolation or the sense of, you know, maybe abandonment might be an issue or fear or whatever. You know, insert, everyone's different. Maybe it's excitement, maybe it's, you know, emotional swelling of emotions, you know what I mean? It could be so many different things. But either way, this time for him and this time for you needs to be 110% yours. No distractions, no temptation, 100% focused on your personal metamorphosis. During this metamorphosis, there is loss that's involved. Of course, something is being released, but the exchange that happens when you sacrifice, always a sacrifice is always responded by the universe in a positive way. I'm gonna give you this in exchange for this. I release this, it's not an easy process, but I release it and I let go in faith because although I can't see what's on the horizon for me, I trust 
and I open up to what it is that I am trans transitioning into, who it is that I'm transitioning into, and what it is that is coming into my life. The next message that came with this is trusting your personal power. Now, again, for so many of us, we hear the word power, and we instantly start thinking, do, 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 do. What can I do? What can I create? What do I need to, you know, manipulate in order to help this to come into my life? And that is a part of it. Setting intention, working your magic, prayer, you know, going out, the action, all of that is 50% of it. That's the physical aspect of it. But then there's also the other 50%, which is the unseen, the spiritual. You have to remember that as a spiritual being with a purpose and with power, personal power, it's different for everyone, there's two sides to you. There's what you can do physically and there's what you can do spiritually. So once you have done all that you can do and once you have done all that you have done, it's then time for you to take a step back, to go into that cocoon phase and allow the spiritual side in order and the energy to work and to do its its work. If you know that you have done all that you can do, then you literally have done all that you can do. If you spent all this time putting this energy and this effort and work, attention and intention into creating and to manifesting what it is that your heart truly desires, then at some point you then have to sacrifice, you have to release and let go of exerting energy in order for you then to be in a position to receive that. Now again, if this is something that your heart truly desires and you truly want, it is the hardest thing to let go of it and to allow it to carry forward. If it continues moving on with all of the energy and the momentum that you have pushed into it, then it is right, then it is good, then it is meant to continue, it is meant to build energy, and I promise you, it will continue to build momentum all on its own. Sometimes it may take a little time, but that energy, that momentum, that force of all that you have exerted into this will take it and carry it forward. Now, if you take your hands off of it and it flops over, or if it falls, or if it falls apart, that thing is not meant to be a part of your life. You have done all that you can do up until this point and you let it go and it dies. It needs to be let go of, it needs to be released because unbeknownst to you, it does not serve a purpose for you. Now intuitively, if you take a step back and you connect with your intuition, a part of you will hear the confirmation. You'll hear the call of the confirmation of, you know what, I tried. And it doesn't, as a human being, I can't keep emotionally, spiritually, mentally, energetically, physically, putting all of my energy into this thing that does not want to take off the ground, that doesn't want to lift off. I've done all that I can do, now I have to take a step back because my purpose is to not keep fueling and pushing all of my energy into this one thing that doesn't want to seed. Maybe it's not that it's not forever, maybe it's just right now in this moment, the grounding, the stability for it is not strong enough or the soil is not rich enough for this seed to root and to grow and to thrive. Maybe this moment is not conducive to whatever this is manifesting, but maybe in the future that thing will have more potential and the energy that you put into it and the attention, the intention that you put into it will take and it'll start to grow and it'll thrive all on its own. But that leads me to the next aspect of this message that came through on Monday which is this feeling of kind of being stuck. And if this truly is the case where you know, you're in this cocoon and it feels good for you, or you're in this space right now where it might be a little bit emotional, you don't know what's going to happen, you might feel drained, you might feel exhausted, but either way, you're kind of in this space. And for some, we can call it like, I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm not going anywhere. You know that there's something on the horizon, but you don't know what it is. So you're just kind of in this space right now. And you're not really sure where to go, where to turn, what to do. Again, this is allowing the energy to carry forward and for you to be in this space right here in the now and wait to see what manifests. So I'm going to say, for lack of a better word, you're stuck. You're currently in this position. You're hanged man in the tarot card. And what this does is this is the universe signaling to you that no action right now is the best action. 
And when you see a thing or a person stuck in this current space, this is because this is the universe forcing you to be right here, right now, so that you can switch your perspective, so that you can see things differently and you can see the blessing in the moment. Because something right here around you actually needs your attention. And as you take your energy away from exerting, you can then be in this space and look around you and see what it is that needs to happen right now. What is it that needs to occur? What are you missing? Now you guys know that I'm known for my metaphors and the metaphor that, and these symbols that I get, these visions that I get. And the vision, the symbol, the metaphor that I get for this feeling of being stuck in the mud is this person who is walking through the jungle and their sole responsibility in their village is to go through the jungle and to gather water from this one watering hole. Now without them, they would not be able to feed the rest of the village or give water to the rest of the village so that the rest of the village can survive. So everyone realizes that their job, their responsibility is a very important one, but maybe for years this person keeps going down the same path again and again, keeps walking down the same path. And they understand that their job, their responsibility is something that is important, but internally they're getting the signal that there's something more for them. There's something more that they want to happen with their lives outside of them being the, the bringer, the bearer of water. So they set the intention that I want something more meaningful in my life. I want to make a difference. So they keep walking, they keep walking. Now one day, you know, maybe it's, you know, storm season, but this huge storm comes in and floods the path that this person normally takes in order to get their water. So they're walking and they don't realize it, but they slip into mud. So the first thing that they do when they slip into this mud is they panic. Of course, that's what they do because their sense of survival is being threatened. Their survival is being threatened. So it's natural for them to react. It's natural for them to panic. It's natural for them to do all in their power in order to get themselves out of that current state. And that's good because without that, we would not, as a human being, as a, as a race, as a human race, we would not have survived up until this point, I can guarantee you. That is our fight or flight, which serves a purpose, which means that once you're in danger, you do all that you can do in order to get yourself out of that. But in today's current times, side of um, something actually horrible happening to us that makes us you know, push for our will to survive, our will to live, sometimes in the day to day, that same fight or flight response gets triggered. So when you're in a, in a position in your life where you can't see the outcome, you don't know, and your sense of survival, your sense of stability, or something that you want, you can see that it's going to be taken away from you or you're being triggered, you of course are gonna do everything within your power in order to get yourself out of that situation, in order to get yourself out of that circumstance. But what ends up happening is that once you do all this energy and once you've exerted all this power and you don't see anything happening, it, it may actually be making your situation worse, you inevitably kind of accept your current situation. You kind of accept your current circumstance and a part of you gives up. You're stuck. You're stuck in the mud. So back to my metaphor, that's where this person sees themselves. They don't know what's on the horizon. Is someone going to find them? You know, what's the future hold for them? Is there another flash flood that's gonna come through? Are they gonna drown here? All of these things are the un unknown, but they have done everything up until this point and they can't get themselves out of that situation. So the only thing that they can do now is to sit and to look around them and look in their environment and, and find, okay, what is it that I can use? What is it that, um, you know, a sign, a signal, show me something that will help me to get out of this. Show me, you know, maybe I'll find something to eat or whatever the case is. But either way, at the end of the day, there is a reason for them being stuck in the mud in that current situation, powerless and not knowing what the future is to come. In a, in a sense, they're isolated, they're abandoned, they're, they're um, still, they're stagnant. So this person looks around them and they see this bush and they've never noticed this bush before. They've never noticed this bush before and they, and they see these berries on it and they say, are these berries edible? Are these berries, do the, you know, can I, what benefit can I get from them? I could die right now, but I'm hungry. I've been stuck in this mud for eight years, for eight hours. I'm hungry, I need energy. You know, no one, I'm not seeing any signs of the village. You know, my members from the village come to see me. So they take those berries and they eat them. Granted, 
Could they die? Could they get violently sick? Absolutely. But this could also be a cure for cancer or a cure for some, you know, gives you un, you know, like energy and power. So this person grabs those berries within that current situation and eats them or is guided to eat them and then realizes that this berry, outside of it being in, incredibly healthy and healing to their body and medicinal, but it gives them energy, it brings out the best in them or whatever it is, fill in the blank. And what that person just did was discovered something that they outside of, that they've never seen, but the world has never experienced. And if it wasn't for them being stuck in that current space, then they would have never experienced it. They would have never had these berries to give back to their family, to give back to their tribe, and ultimately to create some level of healing for the rest of the world. Now, if you're wondering if this person ever got out of the mud pit, of course they got out of the mud pit. How could they not? Their sole responsibility is to carry water back to the village, and when the village realizes that a person didn't come back, they're like, well, where is Johnny? Someone needs to go out, or three of us need to go out and find him. And of course, there they found him in the mud, and he's just like, guys, I've been stuck here for eight hours. Why did it take you so long? But whatever, thanks so much for coming to get me. But as I was stuck here, I also found this. The reason for this metaphor is pretty much to explain that the universe will put you in a, in a space that, or energetically things will align themselves in order to put you in this current space right here, right now, in order for you to look at what is in your current environment, in order for you to figure it out, to see things different, and to find the blessing, the gift in this present situation. Especially if you're a person who is constantly putting their energy in and setting intention and trying and striving and working, if you know that you have done all that you can do and there's no outcome, there's no end result, you're, you still feel stuck, it's because there is something here right now, whether it be in this moment or for the year or two years or three years, in order for you to find and to, and to discover. And a part of that that will help you is to put that hand over your stomach and over your heart and ask the universe or the divine, your angels, your guides to speak to you and to send you signals of what it is that you need to see and what it is that you need to be aware of and prepared for now that you are currently stuck or in this current status quo. So although it may seem like the energy is stagnant, although it may seem like the circumstances, the, the potential around you is stagnant, it's really not. It's being open to why you're here because everything happens for a reason. So my loves, I hope that this message applies to you. Whoever is watching this video, I have already set the intention that you see it at the right moment, at the right time. Maybe you're not guided to listen to this video or see this video right as it publishes. Maybe it will resurface two years later or 10 years later or 15 years later if YouTube or whatever is still in existence. But I set the intention that those that see this, that they needed to see it, and that it makes a change, it makes a difference in their lives. Thank you so much for watching. If this did make a difference for you, then I encourage you to share it with a friend or to share it with your online tribe, your online community. And I hope to see you in my next video. So make sure that you're subscribed and turn on those notifications so that you can see it as soon as I post, all right? I'm sending you guys all of my love and all the light, the positive light and healing that the universe can muster up and give. All right, I'll talk to you soon.